Hi there. Um, today we will be looking at how to add different systems and endpoints and different elements onto the DSYN canvas. So adding elements onto the canvas is all driven by the right hand side bar here. You can see the three blue buttons here. Um, these are the main buttons which allow you to add elements onto the canvas. Um, and we will start with system. Um, if you click on the system, you can see there are two options. There's the use wizard to create a system and you can also create a system manually. Now uh, using a wizard to create a system uh, you're basically adding a full, fully configured system from the system's library, from a template. Um, these, these are basically connectors developed internally by Desync um, and adding a system onto a canvas gives you uh, the full range of data endpoints available underneath that system as well as uh, their respective data layouts. So let's have a look at the uh, wizard. Um, so we click at use wizard to create system. Um, it will prompt you um, to select the location on the canvas where you can where you wish to add the system hit the canvas um, and the wizard loads. Now you can search your popular integration here um, or you can just select um, from from this drop down from the pop-up uh, in here. Um, let's choose one. Let's say we want to synchronize WooCommerce with some other system. So we click on the WooCommerce system um, it gives you some information about the system, uh, the version of the API it's using, and the, uh, the entities or data objects uh, available in that system. Click Add System. Um, and usually what you get is basically a basic configuration and authentication settings. For WooCommerce, um, this requires a WooCommerce site URL. So you would fill out um, your URL here. And what it also needs is consumer key and consumer secrets. Now, um, these are internal to WooCommerce. Um, you can create um, an API key inside WooCommerce, uh, which will basically give you um, the values for both fields. Um, and simply hit save. And there you go. So that's your WooCommerce um, system on the decent canvas. Um, as you can see, if we double click on one of the endpoints here, like the customers, we get into the data layout section where you can actually see that um, it's using a JSON as the data type. Um, and it's got all, it's got all these fields um, ready for you. Um, out of the box. So it was loaded out of the template, uh, which Desync prepared internally. Um, and you can go in and um, edit any of these fields. Um, you can add new fields. Um, you can add uh, different functions on it, validate it, and, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's the first system. Um, with every single system, um, when you select, well, it's not just a system. Um, if you select any element on the decent canvas by clicking on its name or um, the endpoint or um, a line between systems, like he, for example, if I click on the line, you notice that um, the right hand si sidebar changes um, to basically reflect the selection. Um, in this case, if we click on the WooCommerce system, um, you can see that there are settings, um, and that's pretty much the um, the original settings uh, you put in. So that's your WooCommerce site URL. Um, you can add HT access um, username and passwords, um, and you have the authorization settings in here um, as I've keyed in originally. Um, so this authorization methods um, you don't really need to change it for the templates. Um, each template developed by Desync um, has got its own authorization plugin. 
Uh, but if you ever need to change consumer key or secrets or even the URL, um, you can do it from here, from the system settings. So that's um, adding system from a template. Um, let's have a look at create system manually. Now, uh, creating a system manually um, doesn't do much for you. It's um, it's basically you're creating a container for endpoints. Um, so in this case, in the WooCommerce which we've created previously, um, you can see that it's a container which got some settings like the system URL and some authentication. And underneath, you can see the different data endpoints, which in this case are customer order and product. When you're creating a system manually, you get only the container. Um, and then you as a user need to add endpoints into that system. So let's go ahead and create a system manually. Um, let's call it my custom system. And that's pretty much it. This is what you get. Um, it's a simple container and now we need to actually add stuff into it. So <clears throat> this is really useful for um, any custom API um, or FTP endpoint. Um, so basically any system which you cannot find in the systems library in the wizard, um, you can still connect this system using dsync as long as there is an available API. How to add an endpoint to a custom system? Again, you just select it by clicking on its name and from the right right sidebar um, you choose add an endpoint. Um, let's call it products. You select the type. So it's either source or destination. It can be both. Um, it's not an endpoint which would both send and receive data. So you need to choose what kind of endpoint this is. So for example, um, with WooCommerce, if we want to extract, export all products from WooCommerce, um, it's a, uh, it would be a source endpoint because we're getting data out of there and pushing it somewhere else. So if you want to extract all products, um, I would select source here and from the connector type, um, I would select an API. This basically adds a blank endpoint into that system. And again, if you click on that endpoint, um, you can see the associated settings here for the API endpoint. So this is where you would specify the URL. Um, you would choose the HTTP method uh, because it's source. It's the only available method in here is get. Um, you can set custom headers. Um, and you can also set basic authentication in here. Now, if the basic authentication is not enough, um, you can go into the system settings and you can choose your authorization methods. If, for example, there is um, an OAuth or OAuth2, we do have generic plugins for that. Um, so you would go generic OAuth1, for example, you would fill all the settings in here with the consumer key secret, the token URIs, and so on. Um, you can add custom headers and you would authorize the connection that way. Um, so that's uh, manual. Let's, let's create an FTP endpoint as well so that I can show you. Um, that would be FTP. And let's make a destination. So in this case, we would be getting data from somewhere and file on an FTP um, on that WooCommerce server. Um, and we choose FTP in here. And here we go. So this is our destination FTP endpoint. Again, uh, if I select it by clicking on it, you can see there's the host. Um, the username for the FTP, password, the protocol used. So these things support all three. It's FTP, FTPS, and SFTP. Um, you can also specify the port, um, the path where the file will be uploaded, and the file name. Uh, the file name can have 
a dynamic date as well to it. Um, once you're done with setting this up, you would just hit save settings. Um, so this is pretty much how you add systems and API and FTP endpoints inside those systems. Um, let's have a look at the um, the source. So there are two types of um, endpoints. Um, there's the FTP and API endpoint, which cannot exist on the canvas without um, the container, which is the system. Uh, but then you have also available these um, simple endpoints like the source upload, which can exist without any system. So what this source upload does, um, it basically takes a file, um, which you upload into DSync and it processes the data based on your settings and sends it um, somewhere. So let's add a source upload endpoint onto the canvas. Click on the canvas, give it a name, <clears throat> and here we go. So that's our upload endpoint. Um, it doesn't have any settings on the right hand sidebar apart from the data layout. There's nothing else needed. Um, basically, if we double click on that, we get into the data layout section. So if, for example, I was uploading a CSV file and wanted it to uh, process data and send it somewhere, I would create a data layout, which is CSV, uh, comma delimited. Let's say I have headers in the first row of the file and then um, I would add some fields, like I can upload a, s a sample file uh, which would generate the fields for me, but let's say we have in the CSV file we have a name and we have um, date of birth in there, which is a date. Um, and we choose a format for the date, let's say it's in this format in there. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So. In this case, um, if I go back to a dashboard, I can see this is my manual upload, manual upload endpoint. Um, I can connect it to um, any of the endpoints available, any of the these these endpoints underneath systems available on the canvas, um, and I can I can link it and I can process data with it. Now. With destinations, uh, we have three options here. So apart from the API and FTP endpoints, which you can add into a system as a destination endpoint, um, you can also add a or uh, create an RSS feed. Um, it's not your traditional RSS feed, which would be XML. Um, this can be any data, um, be it JSON um, or XML. Um, so it's it's really a link point. It's it's not an RSS feed per se. Feed onto the dashboard. I click the RSS feed. I click on the canvas where I want to edit. I'll give it a name and click OK. And we have a destination endpoint, uh, which is an RSS feed. Again, when it's highlighted, selected on the right hand side, um, you can see the settings. Um, in this case, um, it actually shows you the link where the data will be published. Um, and you can add a basic auth to it, uh, username and password, so that it's only accessible to people with that um, username and password. Um, there are two more destination endpoints which can, which are standalone and can be added to the canvas. Um, the next one is email. So what this does, uh, if I run a job and my destination is email. Um, the job will create a file and basically send that file as an attachment to an email address. Um, adding that onto the canvas exactly the same as per the RSS feed. Um, when you highlight it, when you select it, you can see um, you have an optional uh, message. Um, so that would actually appear in the email. Um, and then you have um, a list of email addresses here. So if we go, you can add more, more emails in there. 
So with this settings, it would basically send the data as an attachment to these email addresses, email one and email two. Um, and the last endpoint, which can be added onto the canvas, um, the standalone one is a manual download. Now manual download, um, it's really for uh, testing purposes. It's really good for testing purposes. Um, if you want to test your mapping, if you want to test um, data going through, um, the best way to do this is to basically create a job between a manual upload and a manual download and run it. Um, basically you upload a file to desync um, and desync processes the, um, the data and it will uh, give you a file back um, where you can actually see all the data transformed and um, you can adjust from there. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, there's no other elements you can add onto the canvas. Um, it's really just the system from the wizard, a custom system, in custom system you can add um, API or FTP endpoint and then we have the standalone um, source endpoint uh, we have the RSS or RSS feed or link point, um, email, and the download as a destination.